Well, since there's no game this weekend, I thought it might be quite nice here at the XS Studios, which I'm going to go into in a second, to just have a chat to Paul Dickoff, who was my co-presenter on the programme on Tuesday night. If you've missed it, you can download the podcast. I always put the, the links up via my Twitter and Facebook accounts, Ian Cheeseman Forever Blue. But having the chance to talk to Paul Dickoff means that uh, I can perhaps get uh, his views on how City are playing at the moment. So that's what makes up this little interim vlog between the two games at Chelsea. Fantastic win there. And the next home game against Stoke. Anyway, let's see what Paul's got to say. The thing that, even at Watford, the 6-0 victory, I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, 10 minutes to go, you, you're sort of 4 or 5 nil up, and they're hunting for the next game, the next goal, which is in itself phenomenal. But the fitness levels, I don't remember a City side as fit as this. Do you? No. And did, did you see any evidence of that in that training that you yeah, talked about? They worked, um, and I mean in intense heat, especially when you were out in Houston, we bumped into each other in Houston, and not just the, the, the heat, but the humidity. Um, and the players were training twice, sometimes three times a day out there, um, and training really hard with and without the ball. You know, a lot of the pre-season training now is a bit more structured from when I used to play, where you just used to run for the first two weeks <laughs> um, until you were sick. But uh, now the balls are out in the first day, um, and and I completely agree with it. You know, if you're working hard with the ball, that's what you do on a Saturday. You don't run around the pitch forty times to get your match fitness. Um, and there was a lot on that. There was a lot of pressing involved in it. Um, and there was a lot of work about being patient as well, about teams being patient because and not forcing things, and I think we've seen that. Um, I don't know for sure, but you're talking about the Watford game and it was 4-0, pushing for the fifth, pushing for the sixth, same Crystal Palace game. I think that Pep wants to set a statement out and the players want to set a statement out to, that they are going to score as many goals as they can this season because you never look, it's really tight at the minute and there's one goal in it. But come the end of the season, look what happened and a few seasons ago and it went down to goal difference you know I'm not saying it will be but it, it could be very similar and the players at City have got and the belief they've got and I heard one of your callers talk at the start about the team spirit about the way they celebrated that was the first thing I was sitting with Mike Summerby watching a training session in the States and the first thing that struck me was, was how together they were compared to maybe previous years you know I don't know whether that's because there's a lot of young enthusiastic blood that, that's been brought into the squad as well um, the way they celebrated when Fabian Dell scored his goal last week, you could tell the whole squad was delighted for him. Um, but there's a real hunger and a real togetherness about them this season, and you put that together with the players they've got and, and how they're playing at the minute, it's a fantastic recipe going forward. Now, Paul, in the international break as we are at the moment, it's all very frustrating as a football fan and not actually watching as much football and City as you'd want to. Does it frustrate you? Because City are in such form, aren't they? Yeah, it does. It frustrates me um, for a lot of reasons. You know, One, the way City are playing at the minute. Um, two, different subject altogether, but the internationals for me don't seem to have the, um, the excitement around them is what they used to have. Um, but the way City have been playing, um, the biggest worry for a manager at any time is, you know, Pep now probably won't see his players till 48 hours now before the game. You know, a lot of them be travelling Argentina, Brazil, all over the world and, you know, and a lot of them will be playing um, before the big Premier League weekend and for a lot of managers that's that's, that's a huge worry for them. Who's been the players? Is, is there one player or players that have really stood out for you and what's been happening recently? How long have we got? Um, I'll start with the goalkeeper. I think he looks, he looks the real deal. Um, you know, he comes from crosses, he's a fantastic shot stopper um, and we all know Pep likes a goalkeeper who's, who's good with his feet and he's, it's not just his passing, it's his range of passing, you know, whether it's 10 yards, 20 yards or whether he's, he's launching 170 yards to Aguero or Gabriel Jesus down there um, and it gives us a solid platform um, to play off. Uh, John Stones, I think, has been absolutely outstanding, I thought he was towards the end of last season, um, took a lot of unjust stick and I look at um, the centre-halves that Pep's had before. You know, um, Jerome Boateng um, at a young age and um, Gerard Piquet at, at Barcelona, who I believe when he brought, brought them both in as young centre-halves, John Stones was a better player when he brought them in then and both of them have went on to be top centre-halves, um, world-class centre-halves and I think John Stones is going that way as well. And then I could talk all day about the attacking flair going forward, you know, to Kevin De Bruyne is the, uh, for me and for a lot of people, the best player in the Premier League at the minute by a country mile and that's um, saying something, you've got David Silva alongside you. Um, and both fullbacks, both wingers, I could go on and on and on. But as a team, um, rather than picking at individuals, the whole team looks the real deal at the minute. One question I've sort of been putting to myself really is: Is how much is Kevin De Bruyne worth? I mean, Philip Coutinho 
Coutinho was being targeted for 140 million from Barcelona. What would De Bruyne be worth? I don't think there's any amount of money that, that could buy him. He's, 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 you know, he's invaluable to the team. He's, he's priceless for me. You know, if you're looking at the sort of figures that have went, have went ahead, 90 million for Pogba. You're talking saying the Coutinho money, the Mbappe money, the Neymar money. I couldn't put a price on Kevin De Bruyne at the minute. He's just um, not just outstanding with the ball, um, but without the ball, and he's really biggest compliment I can play him, you look at the world class players that City have at the minute and how they're playing, he is the main man in the team um, and when you've got the other players around him that's, that's a huge compliment for him. I know it's gone now, you know the Aguero incident um, and hopefully he's not going to be too far before he's back again, Did, did as, a, as a former manager and a former player did you have any concerns about him being away or? No, not at all, look, there's a couple of things for me as well, um, one, if, if the taxi hadn't have crashed Nobody would have known he was in Holland and it wouldn't have been a big issue. Um, the second one is it could have happened out in Deansgate at any point. You know, he wasn't he wasn't breaking any club rules. Um, he wasn't out drinking. He wasn't out drinking and being behind a wheel at the same time. You know, um, he was over there, I believe, to, to meet his son and to go to a concert and fly back in plenty of time for the game. He's he's a top professional. He's a, he's a top player um, and seen in and around the club. He's, He's well respected, and I don't think there's to be any problem with that at all. The three... It's people wanting to make more out of it the more it is. Yeah, absolutely, and I saw that at the press conference. Yeah. I mean, one thing I would say though is that the next three games in October look all winnable. I know it's a dangerous thing to yeah. say, but Stoke, Burnley, and then an away game to West Brom. Talk about the league games, yeah. of course. It's a real opportunity now for City to potentially stretch out, isn't it, at the top? Yes, it is, and you know, um, it's saying they're all winnable games. If I believe people before the weekend and even some after the weekend were saying that City hadn't played MD yet and hadn't been tested, you know, and that, that's some statement. And they've already played Liverpool, um, Everton first game of the season, which on paper was a tricky game, especially down to ten men, and then a Chelsea team who had just went over and blew away Atletico Madrid. But um, so you look at the games I've got coming up. I believe every game this season with the squad, and I'm not getting carried away or being silly. The squad that have got City could win every single game in the league because I don't think on any day there's a team that can match them as a 18 man squad in the football that they play. For it's worth, I agree with him. Thanks very much, Paul. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, do this to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting it done anyway. All right, mate. See you, yeah. Come in again soon, mate. See you, Paul. See you, bud.